Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's fundamental and technical supply and demand forex and gold analysis. If you're new or warm, welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you and if you uh, like the videos that I provide every weekend, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow trading colleagues. Definitely help support the uh, channel, a free way to support the channel. And so getting into the week ahead you can find this uh, analysis on uh, tradingeconomics.com if you click on their uh, go to their main site tradingeconomics.com and then go to the week ahead tab you'll see um uh, uh, their analysis on what is coming up uh, next week and so let me just zoom in a little bit in the week ahead uh, in the US the spotlight will be taken by uh, ISM non-manufacturing PMI the University of Michigan's consumer sentiment and PPI data um, so that's more uh, driven by an, an I guess an early indication of um, of the economy as well as uh, inflation uh, data. So investors will also follow interest rate decisions in Australia, yeah, so a lot of central banks coming out with their um, decisions. So Australia, uh, Canada, and um, inflation rates from China, Brazil, Turkey, Russia, Philippines. Um, and then finally, we've got uh, German factory orders and trade data from China, Canada, and the US should provide some insights into, insights, insights, I guess, into the state of the of global demand. And this month, not necessarily this week, but this month, we've got a lot of uh, central bank um, uh, announcements not you know this week is is going to be Australia and Canada but we've got um, pretty much you know uh, the Bank of England I think the ECB uh, the Federal Reserve um, and then coming all coming up this month as well so it's going to be a busy month in the next maybe definitely t uh, two weeks up until maybe you know just before Christmas and then things will probably uh, quiet and also probably they will quieten down um, for the Christmas period and then back to the new year Anyways, uh, um, trading economics have a really uh, detailed um, uh, description as to you know what to look for. So click on the uh, uh, on the week ahead tab, and you can have a read of all of that and what is to be expected. So I'm going to get into uh, the charts and uh, just some of my uh, my bias and my analysis going forward. And if you haven't watched it already, I released a video this week or two videos this week uh, called the Forex Price Action Crystal Ball versus Forex Fundamental Analysis Part 1 and there is a Part 2 that I've released. And in this analysis, I pretty much spell out and uh, go over, um, and this was uh, from a, a private uh, members Discord group call that I hold on Wednesdays and this was on the 19th of October um, and also as well I basically said this um, uh, months in advance as well there are about two or three other um, private members calls which basically was talking about this exact analysis and this coming and so if you watch this you and, and part one and part two what you'll be able to uh, uh, you know gather from that was that this move to the downside was expected and it was coming so think about you know wednesday the 19th right which was this day right here 19th of uh, october 2022 is when i had the call and again i've been saying this probably from um from august september times but um this is just one of the ones that I released and you'll see that there was a reason why prices have you know, uh, pulled back. Now, let's not confuse this with um, a reversal and many traders would uh, confuse this with a reversal in you know, a dollar trend, right? This is not a dollar trend. And the reason why I've zoomed out is because if you look at the year to date, yeah, meaning the 2022 lows to the 2022 highs, so this was an absolute bargain price for the dollar and this has been obviously an expensive uh, price for the dollar yeah between a bargain or a cheap price and expensive price is what's known as fair value and everything price typically reverts back to the mean right reversion to the mean which basically the mean being um being an average and an average being um in terms of the the narrative of of expensive and uh and bargain prices and looking at value this is fair value yeah so it's not a, really a surprise as to why the dollar has kind of pulled back especially after this you know this major uh trend and it's really been driven by and i'm not going to give away you know the, the the whole video or anything like that but it's been driven by a shift i guess or the potential shift in um you know monetary policy and many trades 
traders would say fundamentals don't work well they do right just not in the way that you know um, is taught online but you know pretty much forecasted this to happen and although every week i literally continue to say that i'm still long is because um i tend to i want to be a bargain hunter i'm not really trading just to trade and go short and try and go long on the currency unless there is a sustained uh, or i believe there's going to be a sustained trend and i don't think i just think this is a pullback to you know cheaper areas and bargain prices and what we've seen as well is the potential for a floor or or the the dollar to have a fortune in reversals because of what happened uh yesterday why well, say yesterday but on friday um, with regards to um, uh, the data and jobs data, right? So non-farms, US hiring and wages extend strong gains, keeping pressure on the Fed. Payrolls rose uh, 263,000 in November, above all but one estimate. And the average hourly earnings, which is um, inflation related, jumped to 0 0.6, uh, the most in nearly a year. And so... Um, that keeps pressure on the Fed. And so the US employment added more jobs than forecasted, which is good, um, uh, say good, but whether it's good or bad, but in terms of um, it putting you know, pressure on you know, the Fed to try to continue to appreciate uh, the currency um, and continue with their monetary policy. And if you're long dollars, then that would be a good thing, right? Um, so anyways, forecast on wages uh, surged by the most in nearly a year, pointing to enduring inflation pressures that boost chances of higher interest rates from the Federal Reserve. And so, you know, that's the analysis also as well. Larry Summers uh, says Fed will need to boost rates more than markets expect. So former Treasury chief warns of a high interest rate recession and Summers says economy could slide suddenly like avalanche. And that doesn't sound uh, great, but um, it says he says that we have a long way to get inflation down to the Fed's target. Summers uh, told Bloomberg Television Wall Street Week with David Weston, I actually watched that as well. Uh, as for Fed policymakers, I suspect they're going to need more increases in interest rates than the market is now judging or uh, that they're now saying. And obviously Larry Summers is um, ex-Treasury chief, is a very smart man, very experienced. And so um, not to say that he can't be wrong, but um, you know, when certain people talk, you know, you have to kind of, uh, you have to listen right and so um you know putting that all into context and understanding um a pullback does not make a change in the trend when we're back down to you know fair value i think again the dollar being you know a potential buy technically at these areas of course nobody knows 105 was seen as a bit of a um a potential for a target and i did say that there's a possibility for it to come down to the 104s of course uh and the, even the 103s right and that would be decent and i think that now that the dollar has um you know inflation pressures haven't necessarily subsided um, as well as uh, the economy um, still being able to support rate hikes in terms of uh, jobs um, and employment, I do think that I'm not saying that the dollar is going to reverse, you know, thousands of pips. Nobody knows that, right? But in terms of understanding value in comparison, right, to other currencies, I think the dollar is again is again, you know, one of the better off uh, currencies. And price and value are two different things, right? Price can, uh, you know, doesn't always reflect value. And um, and so the the lower this goes, I think the more it becomes obviously a bargain. Anything below fair value starts to become cheaper and so um the market is always looking for bargains um and draws traders into going you know the other way uh this was known as also as well the pain trade right pain trade and uh, this is driven by things like short squeezes end of month flows which we cover in our private members group and um and so uh you know, but for me, my bias is still always long dollars, even in the face of a, a pullback, because ultimately, um, you know, I'm looking to buy for uh, for cheap. So for me, uh, dollar index, this is just coincides with any kind of dollar buying on other currencies. And I do think zooming in, we should want to uh, see at least a bit of a um, a bit of a pullback uh, to the upside, as long as again the data supports the narrative. The data always has to support the narrative, and at the moment there is positive sentiment. Um, especially, I think this might have fallen a bit more had inflation had gone to the downside, um, but and, and jobs had been weaker. But obviously, um, it hasn't. So I think over the medium to sh uh, 
about medium term I would say for now at least we should we should in a word you know possibly and could it's not definite right because no one can predict the future but you know would, would the probabilities would say that the dollar should be a buy at some point and again this isn't financial advice either um, one of the things that is going to stand in the way of um, uh, of uh, the potential for a dollar reversal as well uh, is China's uh, economists calling for easing of, co of COVID curbs to boost growth. And so if um, there is a reopening of the Chinese economy, that would trigger more risk on sentiment. And then the dollar, in fact, won't necessarily benefit or won't benefit in, in at least the short to medium term because um, money t t would then tend to come out of the dollar and into um, uh, currencies, commodity currencies, like, for example, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, um, because uh, China is um, really the world's economic engine. And, um, you know, there are growth opportunities that money will flow into and out of. And so uh, I think the money, uh, there will be, you know, portfolios being readjusted um, out of the dollar as well and into um, other um uh, growth uh, currencies and commodity currencies and so uh, that is another thing that could keep the dollar on the defensive if that you know you see the dollar start coming down um, and that story is gaining traction then that can also push the dollar to the downside but my bias personally is still to the upside and so yeah I think the dollar is um, uh, uh, a buy again you can also sell if you want to sell um, if you're looking for any kind of short trades and you're, you know, looking for, uh, um, you know, you don't agree necessarily agree with me, that's fine. You don't have to agree. And if you want to, you know, look for um, sell confluences, then you're looking for uh, the 106 price to come up to the 106 area at the moment and then looking for short trades. Again, not necessarily in the dollar index, but you would look for it on um Confluence with, for example, the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD, etc. Um, looking at the dollar yen, and the dollar yen has pulled back again, going back out to the year to date. If we look at the year to date price action, and we see this massive trend, right, which was all predictable, all predictable, um, predicted. Um, and in fact, that just reminds me of um, the fact that you guys did not complete the target right anyone watching <clears throat> i had a 10 percent 10 likes target on my videos and if i get 10 percent like um one out of ten of you uh, like um my video uh, my weekly videos um and over a thousand views and i would release a uh, a webinar um that i um recorded on the 3rd of November forecasting Forex trends that lasted for months and uh, the guys in the group in fact um, and I have all the evidence of this uh, were, were aware of my forecast for um, the dollar yen making this type of move to the upside and um, and so um, I can show you how to do it but and I recorded the webinar showing you guys what you need to know but uh, I just needed you guys to comply and uh, you know one in, one in ten of you just basically liked the video just press like but um, unfortunately we fell short of the target so I can't release the, uh, the video until I do um, and until I do then until you guys uh, you know one in ten of you like my YouTube video um, weekly video then unfortunately i'm not going to be releasing this until maybe next year and even then i might not even release it it might just be for those who actually turned up for the webinar who got the information and benefited from it so um all you got to do is just make sure that i get over a thousand views and one in ten of you like this video and my weekly um analysis videos and once i get that you know within seven days then I will release the webinar. Believe me, it's a webinar that really kind of cuts out a lot of the nonsense. It's what you really need to know in terms of um, uh, fundamentals analysis and uh, forecasting trends that last for months. Anyways, um, getting back to the dollar yen again, just looking at the yearly lows, yearly highs, we're really just pulling back to again, fair value, fair value does not mean that we are, you know, the trend has ended. It might be a short term pullback and I get the size of the move to the downside looks like lower highs and lower lows. It's making, you know, a new trend, but zoom out, always zoom out when you see the fact that it's not, you know, it's just pulling back to, you know, a, a decent demand zone. 
then you know it puts things into perspective so i think we are at the uh the lows or somewhere near these lows where you want to probably now look to potentially start to buy the uh, the dollar over the yen the, the bank of japan are the only bank bank that are not uh hiking rates um still so uh ultimately i think the dollar is still a buy over the yen um you do have some supply uh, right here in case you do want to look for um you know pullbacks to look for sell trades so those two zones would be the immediate zones that you would look towards if you do get a pullback and you want to be a buyer of the yen then you're looking at the 13863 levels but uh for me my bias would be to the upside especially after the good news um in terms of um well, i say good news but you know the positive news um out of uh, the fact that we've got US inflation, um, you know, still a potential problem, wage growth, as well as, um, you know, jobs supporting the economy. So anything down into the 13350s, down to the 1330s, I think is a decent buying opportunity. Uh, Dollar Swiss, again, zooming out year to date, low to the high. Actually, this is um, uh, the dollar hasn't really benefited at all against the. Um, against the uh, the Swiss franc this year. We are again at a cheap, quite a bargain area. So I think, have we broken through that demand zone yet? Well, I'll keep it there for now because it's still a tradable opportunity. So from a demand perspective, you do have a demand zone here and you've got another one there. And then you've got these ones all the way down here. So these are the zones that you daily zones that you're looking for anyway if you're looking for a buy trade if you're looking for sell trades then i would probably say you're looking at all of this as a you know your first zone that you'd look for um potential supply the next supply zone up from that is here which is hidden supply and uh, you're looking at those zones here on the um for the uh, dollar swiss and so again a nice reversal in fortunes for the dollar price um, you know, should potentially move this uh, higher at some point. Again, it could go lower before it goes higher. Who knows? But um, I think the uh, dollar buys. I think again, we've we've seen maybe the uh, temporary floor in the uh, dollar weakness and dollar weakness and devaluation. Um, dollar uh, CAD year to date as we go into the end of the year. Yeah, lows to the highs and. Looking at the R tool again, Canadian dollar has been a bit weak this this um, against the against the dollar. If we're looking at buy trades, then you're looking ultimately at demand around here, uh, supply your nearest supply zone. I'm gonna put it up here because um, I do think that although we've pulled back a little bit into into you know here i don't think it's enough for me to want to draw that as a zone so i think if anything if you want to be a buyer of the dollar against the canadian dollar i think that's decent and if you want to be a buyer against the uh a buyer of the canadian dollar against the dollar i think the highs are going to be the one three nine is going to be really the best opportunity to look for uh, uh buy trades on the canadian dollar uh new zealand dollar us dollar has just been going from strength to strength and we're coming up to quite a decent area um of supply here if you want to be a buyer of the US dollar of course um, not quite there yet but I think that opportunity technically is actually um, really nice um, and the the New Zealand dollar and the RBNZ their central bank haven't um, you know, uh, have kind of bucked the trend in terms of uh, hiking more than expected. They hiked by 75 basis points rather than their expected 50 basis points, which is keeping New Zealand dollar actually quite um, one of the factors keeping the New Zealand dollar quite quite strong. Also, as well, there has been um, the potential for China reopening, which um, would benefit the New Zealand dollar. And so, any pullbacks into you know any kind of demand zone if you're looking to trade that against the um the us dollar would be a buy if you're looking at you know potential risk off continuing and really kind of a ceiling to the um uh to the uh, new zealand dollars um uh, appreciation then um i think this supply zone is going to be really nice for a for a decent um sell and uh we've had this you know this kind of 
move which has kind of gone straight up with no real major pullbacks and so ultimately you will get a pullback at some point in the same way that you had a nice move all the way down with no pullback this was the pullback and then you've got the same thing going on this side of things so i think prices should pull back at least to again um, a decent um, area possibly around the uh, 60 60s to five nines yeah, somewhere around maybe here but again not really a pair that i'm interested in trading at the moment uh pound dollar right got end up getting stopped out of this uh, trade but i'm i've actually re-entered back in on this and so uh the pound is uh is 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 baffling everybody really when you think about it from a from a an investment perspective um and, and as bad as the, the dollar might seem i can't see it being worse than the um than the dollar and i think this is just one of those um short squeezes that have lasted for a while because um when you look at for example britain you know is near the bottom of the heap for economic growth potential you know former bank of england official says dip explains high uk tax burden burden uh, labor shortages behind steep collapse of growth speed limit and so you know britain's growth potential has fallen behind every large economy except mexico due to collapsing productivity and severe labor market shortages according to former bank of england rate setter michael saunders so um you know this is like it's like you 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 look at um you know the pound and you look at you know uh, the performance of the pound you would think that the pound would be um you know uh, a a a buy right in terms of uh, value but i think this is highly uh overvalued or expensive for the um for the pound just like i said from a fundamental perspective yes you know it things keep going higher um but for me the downside potential for the pound um you know there's still targets of the pound reaching at least one uh 110 uh, and even even like as far as the 114 so even if it comes down to the 114s um and this is where the demand zone would be uh you still have at least about a 900 pip move to the downside so i don't mind losing a few um, a couple of trades here and there if it means that my risk reward potential to the downside if it reaches there is going to be at least uh, 10 11 12 to 1 so I'm back in on this let's see you know if it can finally roll over towards the end of the month now that we've got some decent news on the uh, on on the uh, on the dollar let's see if that rolls over for me i can't really see you know myself buying the pound um fundamentally it's really just not a um like i said you've just seen you know the uh the fact that what they're projecting for the for the uh for the pound and i think it is one of the worst uh currencies again the move has been a bit more of a of a surprise in terms of um you know it not rolling over just yet but what that does is that just creates more liquidity to the upside um, allows the institutions to buy for cheaper and then because they actually plan their trades out for you know months in advance allows them to get in for cheaper and then i think it's going to roll over at some point um so yeah that's really the pound euro dollar i'm in this trade as well um looking for more downside uh, we are up coming up into this area here in this supply zone um i'm actually in from uh, I think it was a weekly zone that I ended up getting in on. Um, and so let's see what happens if it rolls over again around here. For now, for this daily um, analysis, you know, you're looking at just slightly higher and then to the downside, I think uh, that would be decent uh, for a potential short trade. Again, I think the 105s, 50s, 106s is, is, is very, very, very cheap. Again, this could be... Um, there could be a reversal in fortunes fundamentally for the euro and that would drive the euro higher but at the moment it's difficult to see if you are looking to be a buyer of the euro then you've got these areas right here uh, for demand first demand zones one and two but um, again my bias is for um it's for dollar downside again there's lots of bank analysis uh you know calling for at least uh, prices to come down to uh round around here by the end of the year and into the into uh, you know 2023 so um there's still a good you know 
at least about 500 pips in order to uh, to to get on on this um, on this uh, this trade. Uh, Euro fundamentals talks about ECB uh, Guindos uh, sees inflation at current levels for three or four months. Uh, so European Central Bank Vice President Luis de Guindos um, expects Euro area inflation to stay at current levels for a few more months. So inflation may be three, four months at these levels, but we will have a clear slowdown in the first quarter of 2023. Uh, uh, he said in um, Madrid on Friday, we see that inflation is beginning to slow down, but it, will, it um, has to be stable, continuous over time. We have an M-shaped evolution. And so, um, you know, inflation around the world hopefully is coming down. So, you know, we've, when we when we always kind of focus on the U.S. dollar and the, and the Fed, but um, and you know the impact of inflation coming down and what that has on the dollar. But the same thing is going to happen to the the Europe as well as you know the U.K. and other central banks across the world because as they say, a rising tide tide lifts all boats right and if that happens then obviously if the tide goes out then it's gonna lower all boats and so um you know the the, the dollar isn't exclusive you know to the the effects and the dollar valuation isn't exclusive to the effects of what the central bank does so if if if, if inflation coming down is affecting the dollar uh, and devaluing the dollar then it's going to happen the same thing is going to happen to Europe and the same thing is going to happen to every other central bank so um, so for me if that does start to come down and they uh, surprise because the expectation as well is seventy five basis points. Oh, sorry, I don't know why I did that. Uh, 75 basis points was, was the expectation for the hike. But if they don't hike by 75 basis points and they hike by 50, then, um, basis points, then, um, then the market has to revalue the, 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 the euro um, at 50 basis points and that will bring the euro to the downside, right? Or it should do anyway. And so let's see what happens there. Aussie dollar um, again benefiting from uh, dollar bit of dollar weakness, but again if we look at the overall year to date from low or from high to low, yeah, and you know you'll see that we haven't even really pulled back to fair value yet. So though yes we're seeing a bit of a pullback, you know it, you know there's still some um, some areas that needs to be taken out in order for this to kind of be determined from a you know a trending perspective right um or reversal in trends and so for me i think the uh uh you've got a supply zone there not really a pair that i'm interested in trading to be fair only to the long side once risk on starts to come and if risk on starts to come then i'm you know i think it's going to be probably one of well the australian dollar is going to be one of my uh my immediate buys from a demand from a from a currency and a risk on perspective, not necessarily against the US dollar, but I will look for any pullbacks on Australian pairs and look for a buy opportunities. So that's pretty much where you are if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar. If you're looking to sell the Australian dollar and buy the US dollar, then we actually come up into a decent zone to look for any kind of short trades. Uh, Aussie yen. Again, um, the market giving mixed messages in terms of risk sentiment because if risk was on, um, then you know you would have you should typically have the Australian dollar going higher if risk was on. So the fact that the yen is you know still making lows, I'm not saying it is risk off, but um, it's definitely not risk on. So uh, we've got some demand around here. Uh, in fact, the whole area. I think I'll just basically just put this this demand zone in. Um, wide area of demand i do think that um the australian dollar is a buy as long as um you know if china starts to reopen so i think anything around the 90 areas is going to be a really nice area for and a bargain price for the australian dollar uh, again looking at the year to date um lows and highs you know bargain for the australian dollar expensive for the australian dollar uh fair value comes in at just below those 90 areas and so that's what I'm looking at where I'm looking to buy the Australian dollar and again hopefully if risk on comes in or the Bank of Japan do not um, 
uh, change their monetary policy because if they start to change their monetary policy then I think maybe all bets are off um, and the yen I think is a buy there is a, quite a wide zone of supply right here in terms of the daily um, and um, but I think that always the top end of that supply zone should be the one and then you've got uh, another zone smaller zone here and then you've got a uh, bigger zone right there and so that's where in fact I've just seen that it's going to be hidden supply so in fact it all encompasses that whole area there but I think the uh, the better area to look for any kind of pullbacks I think if you're looking to buy the yen it's going to be at the 96 area that is going to be where the fresher area of supply is before looking at getting short and finally gold gold benefiting from a weak dollar and um, I'm actually uh, not trading gold but for anyone who's been uh, you know watching my weekly analysis been saying that gold is a buy as price as prices have been coming down you know here from an investment perspective and now we've seen prices go to the upside um, I think there's probably maybe going to be one more push uh, to the um, to the downside potentially over the next uh, coming month or two as the dollar potentially starts to strengthen um, or if it does strengthen then this is what you're going to see and um, you, know, you could see a bit of a pullback and uh, this is backed up by um, by analysis from HSBC and so um, they they said gold likely upside in 2023 amid dollar weakness and our uh, expectation for likely dollar weakness in 2023 should be positive for gold while Fed tightening uh, could still uh, restrain gold at least into the first quarter of 2023 an eventual end to its hike rate hike cycle should aid gold and that's it's really important um, because um, what you got to um, know is that the dollar will be a sell at some point right as it starts to come down in 2023 um, but it talks about you know the the fact that in 2023 the first quarter will still be supportive of the dollar but as they start to come down on their you know rate hiking cycle um, you know uh, then then gold should be a buy so probably as we head into 20 the end of 2023 and the dollar starts to strengthen and then we get to you know the first quarter of March you know February March would be you know where the first quarter would start to end and the second quarter begins we could see then the dollar start to uh, weaken and devalue um, as we get to the end of the cycle and then that would benefit gold is basically what they're saying so over the next few months you know can you expect the dollar to go higher of course it can go higher um, but if the dollar is strengthening if you think the dollar is going to strengthen from now then and you know the correlation between gold and the dollar you know continues in terms of you know dollar strength and gold you know um, devaluation then you have to expect another push down another buying opportunity as prices go down um, for the final you know buy of maybe 2022 and 2023 and as we start to look at you know recessions or the avoidance of recession right because that's going to come um, as the world goes into a potential recession um, or certain countries at least like you know the UK and Europe for sure um, then looking at gold is going to be a nice hedge against um, you know all of that uh, uncertainty and so I think there might be one more push down for gold as the dollar strengthens for the next maybe month or two or three and then as the dollar um, you know hiking cycle ends gold uh, definitely being one more buy and so uh, that's the analysis backed up you know when I, when I whenever I do analysis it's always backed up by uh, by experts and um, and bank analysis and so for confidence of course we're not always going to be right and we're never always going to get the timing right but one thing we do more often than not is understand where the trends are and um, you know forecasting those trends and uh, if we get one of the trends right which we often do then we can ride it up for you know um, a decent profit anyways guys um, take care don't forget to like this video if we do then we can get you know 10% of you like this video uh, after at least I record the next video next week then we can I can release this webinar which is really going to help you guys but until that happens it's going to be kept in the vault so uh, I hope you all have a great week take care guys and I'll speak to you in the next video